over the last eight or nine years, with, uh, as a graphic design office, done these projects under the title Things I've Learned in My Life So Far, which basically were sentences from my diary, uh, things that I've actually learned, published in advertising or promotional spaces like billboards and uh, magazine ads and wrapping for buildings and so on. And I'll uh, just show the process between behind some of these things, mostly behind the moving type things because that's what interests me most right now. So this was one of the sentences. Uh, over time, I get used to everything and start taking it for granted. A pretty obvious and clear sentence that uh, particularly is also true for myself in regards to New York. I've been here for 20 years. And of course, I adapted to the city and take it for granted. So the idea was to do all things that we've never done before in New York and have the type come out of these, uh, out of this. And I'll quickly show this little video. So this is sitting on the Empire State Building with a sign rearranging the cat food in the supermarket, taking signage down and uh, shooting it again painting it on a coffee shop window, getting a hairy guy into the studio, going to a New York Yankees game in a Boston Red Sox uniform, making type out of the uh, jewelry dealers on 42nd Street. It's a photo booth, putting our own sign into the photo booth while other people are using it throwing it into a dirty police car, bees and honey. Uh, jumping into the Hudson and swimming towards New Jersey. And putting a little sign on passersby. So, and of course, whenever you do something new, none of this stuff we've done before. There were some stories to tell, so I'll just talk about one single item here. I was sitting outside of this Empire State office window that I've just borrowed from a woman that I met two or three days earlier. And the video taking of it took much longer than expected. So I was getting a little bit bored and I was looking downstairs and the, uh, the sign in my hand was getting heavy. And there was all this commotion going on on 34th Street, like, you know, fire engines arriving and they cut off 34th Street. And I thought, oh, that's so interesting. Uh, <laughs> and not in a you know, second would it uh, occur to me that it would have had something to do with me sitting on the windowsill with a sign that says over in my hand. <laughs> Eventually, the owner of the office came, Debbie, and said, oh, let's go down, check it out. And when we did go down, the first thing we saw was a FBI guy uh, going into his um, radio. We have a jumper. We have a jumper. <laughs> so we walked up to the most senior-looking person that you had, the, the NYPD, the fire department, the FBI, the undercover cops, uh, uh, security guys from the Empire State Building down there, and said, no, this was just a photo shoot. And they said, well, but we had all this uh, people calling in that people were standing, uh, were, uh, there was somebody outside of the window, and Debbie said, no, 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 it was just a photo shoot close to an open window. Now, the FBI is not stupid, and they saw my intern with a fairly big camera, so the first thing they did was, let's impound the camera, let's look at the footage, and we'll see if you guys were outside or not outside. I asked my intern if he had anything else on this videotape that we could forward it to, but the only other shot we had done that day was 
drawing the type into the dirty police car. <laughs> <laughs> it was decided we would all go into the security office of the Empire State Building. I remembered that I still had a metal harness on underneath my jeans. Uh, so if I would go through the airport style uh, metal detectors, I would beep like crazy, but managed to get away in all the commotion with all the tourists going into the uh, Empire State Building. And as soon as I was gone, I discovered I just left my intern and a woman that I barely knew who we uh, uh, borrowed the office from alone with all those security forces. <laughs> they didn't come out for an hour and a half, and in this hour and a half was one of the very few times when I really did not know how to possibly make the situation better. When they did come out, Debbie, the woman from the office, had changed her story and said this was her camera and that there are private female things on this tape that she could not possibly let all those male cops uh, see. And that's actually how we got away with it. <laughs> a somehow technically more ambitious uh, projection is this one that is uh, where the projection can actually see the viewer. It spells out being not truthful always works against me. And as the projection sees the viewer, the viewer rips the spider web into pieces as he or she passes it by, and then as soon as the viewer is gone, uh, it rebuilds itself very much like a spider would rebuild it if a spider, in fact, uh, would be good at doing typography. Uh, the way this works is, uh, it's a very simple setup with a very uh, off-the-shelf hardware. This is an, an iMac camera with an iMac and a regular projector, very so the hardware for this is, you know, three or four thousand dollars. The software is somehow more elaborate and was built by a friend of mine, by Ralf Ammar, uh, in Germany, for uh, over pretty much full time over a period of six months. So we designed the the, spy, uh, the spider web. Then Ralf made all the typography and all the radial lines that you see here sensitive. So whatever you see here in green is sensitive. Then uh, physics play a big role, so gravity plays a big role, with, which is why the uh, spider web can swing quite naturally or react quite naturally like a spider web would. And then the camera itself delivers a very contrasty image that is uh, translated into pixels and Valve builds a force field around these pixels. And wherever this force field interacts with the sensitive lines, the ones that you've seen before in green, you get an interaction, or you get a reaction. We built 10 sets of these, uh, of, the, of this piece, and sent them around the world. Uh, there's a couple of permanent ones in this country. There is one now installed at the, uh, at the new wing of the Art Institute in Chicago. Uh, this one that you see here is in New York. That's really the client to initially uh, uh, asked us to do it. And of course, the, the way it reacts tells the viewer immediately that he or she does play a role in there. The big project that we're working on and that I find unbelievably difficult to, uh, to push forward is a little documentary that includes all of these things I've learned but has a wider scope 
uh, on happiness, and I'll just show you the titles for this. This was uh, all shot in Indonesia last year. Uh, we asked a couple of pigs uh, to come up with the typography. It was just a hair too funky. Then we tried it again with a, go with a goose. And she did a pretty good job, but a bit, little bit too filigree. And my studio at that point was very close to a monkey forest, about five, five uh, miles away. So we asked the monkeys. Just a slight legibility problem, but otherwise fine. And of course, at the end, what you don't organize yourself, uh, these are two gardeners who are obviously very good in climbing the coconut trees in front of uh, our out studio in Indonesia. Thank you.